But what we got going on here, Britton? Well, today we're working on uh, the Iron Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I run that back, run that back, run that back. I hog punk master. <laughs> no, not punk master. <laughs> <laughs> we got one of the punky, the punky Brewster. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Here to show you how to take them apart. We're gonna show you this one. Someone broke it. They asked me to fix it, so I'm gonna do it. Um, I'm gonna turn it on and show you that it still works, even though you can see that it's cracked in the center. Music play motor. The Bluetooth device is ready to pal. Ready to pal. 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 Point is, it works, right? But it's broken. Yes. In half. It's 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 doing that. So okay. we're. Can't step on this right now, no, but right. it would turn on, it will go forward, yada, yada, yada. So we're going to take this apart and replace this. Got our little drill here. Oh shit, there's some wind coming over this <laughs> one. <laughs> Yo, where you getting this from? Home Depot? That Home Depot is the best place. Go to your Home Depot and uh, support your local Home Depot by buying this Ultra Steel drill. What we got in the Bluetooth one is a board. This is a Bluetooth board. It connects to the speakers. First thing you want to disconnect is the lights. There's a connector here on the uh, this activation switch. Disconnect that. Um, there is a charge lead right here going to the main board. Motherboard. I'm going to take that and disconnect that. Then you got the power switch. Two things right there on the board. And because it's a Bluetooth one, we have these uh, speaker cables that go in. Um, I'm going to try to leave them mostly connected, except for the one that goes over to the other side. So that way it won't be too confused. So the one we're going to disconnect is on the inside of the board, right? Okay. To the inside. I'm going to just pull that out, and that goes to the other speaker. So here's one speaker. I was making noise earlier, right? And the other speaker's on the other side. So this one, this one pretty obvious. It doesn't have a socket to go in. It just goes on to the two pins. But I want to make note of uh, which one's red and which one's black if we want to burn it out. Outside, we have red. Inside, black. Okay? So let's make note of that. We're off. Oh, our lights fell off. There you might need some uh, glue to put it back together because some parts are going to fall off like this. We're on the battery side now. Speaker that we disconnected goes through the center. All the wires from the main board go through the center to the other side. Uh, to, and this is the other activation pad. Let's uh, take that bracket off. Kind of make some room so I can actually get to the battery cable, which is a yellow XT60. Unit. All XT60 connectors are yellow. Typical on RC stuff that you'll see that. Usually Chinese RC stuff. Over in, in America, they use Dean connectors. So anyway, I just disconnected um, the status light from there. So with the uh, activation switch light would go there, and this is the um, activation back to the main board. I pay attention to here is um, the color lineup. On some of these, they're lined up with green to green and red to red and blue to blue and others they're crossed so if you're wondering the motor's in the wheel I'm gonna disconnect this part that's the blue one just disconnect yellow the green I think the motors are encoded and this is the encoder side that's an assumption all you motorheads might know what the hell that's all about Looks like I can't really get to the ST60 connector too easily, so what I'm going to do is get the battery out just a tad bit more. Here we go. Lay this down. And here we go. We're going to disconnect the, the battery. I'm going to take off the activation switch. <coughs> nope. There's some sensors in there that when they get something in between them, essentially is what activates the board to tell the motor to start 
in giving power and then the IMU basically on the IMU tilt is what makes it go forward or back and forward, whatever. But the way it, <clears throat> it gets triggered manually is from you pressing on the opposite side and this piece going up. So but that goes up, goes in between the little opening in there, two on each, on each of these things, and that cuts out the light. I'm guessing it's a light going across and it cuts it and then that what that tells it activate. Um, sometimes these things activate like while you just turn it on and what the uh, manufacturer will tell you to do is snip this because it's so tall that it's activating when it's not being pressed on. So if you get one and it's actually um, just always on that may be the issue. Um, could also be a bad one of these, and one that I had to replace one of these uh, activation pedal thingies before. Basically take off the other side, same deal, four screws, same connectors. These are pretty interchangeable, so if you had one side that was acting up, you could swap it. And if the other side starts acting up and this side that was messing up starts working, you can tell that That's that was the problem. But loosen up the motherboard. Uh, four screws, not those screws that are really close to the board. They're tying it. They're tying to the heatsink. And disconnect this right here. And lift this up. And take these cords through the middle. Just so you can see what's broken. The piece. You can see where it broke. What I want to do now is actually take off this, which is uh, using an Allen key. And there's your wheel, a.k.a. your motor. I'm going to speed through this in the sense of putting it back together. We got some more stuff to take apart here. Take these parts out as well. But to know which side's which, um, the battery side's pretty clean. That has a sit flat in there. Um, and the side that has the board has these like standoff areas, so you sit the board down on that. I'm gonna feed this status light on one side through here. This other status light. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some screws in. Once again, make sure you pull the cable tight. These only go in one way because they have a notch. So that notch needs to make sure you, you have it lined up with the hole over here, which is the wide hole. Then also has a notch to make sure you put it into the holes lined up. Motor, which has like a shim rested in there. Go to here. Push this through the center first. I'm going to take this long one and I'll put it in there first. This one to be next. And use this one because it's thicker to push the rest. This side's fairly easy to connect, color match these, back on. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. And this is how you recalibrate if you're wondering, start with it off. And you press and hold the power Music button play motor. until it starts beeping, it beeps at you once, and then it'll really start flashing. Out. That's a wrap. Stay tuned for some more videos from Britain. You will probably do an unboxing of this one right here. There's the box. If you're wondering what was behind us the entire time. 
and uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe, it's late, I'm tired, give this video a thumbs up, or a thumbs down, if you, you don't like it, I don't give a crap, but yeah, more videos to come, more stuff to break and fix, peace.